Welcome to the Standard Bread Canada's Road to the Nationals with hosts John Rallis and Dan Fisher. We're going to take you through the nine races in the Ontario Regional Driving Championship on Tuesday, April 23rd at the Raceway at Western Fair District with the help of some special guests. All right, well, we're welcoming in here Greg Blanchard. Uh, thanks for joining us, Greg. It's actually been a for quite some time since I've last seen you. I think it was day 26 uh, at the Delta in Prince Edward Island when we were stranded there uh, during a snowstorm. Uh, those were some great times, weren't they? Yeah, I, I mean, I was just recovering from the trauma of that. Uh, John, thanks for the reminder. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know if fun is the right word, but we made the best of it. Let's put it that way. Uh, great group of people to be stranded with, for sure. And uh, let's just say I'm glad we all made it back to Ontario safe and sound. And uh, I, I hope we don't see any white stuff for quite a while. Yeah, you, you put it, uh, never a dull moment with horse people, that's for sure. So, uh, you know, how does it feel tomorrow night to, to host the Ontario Regional Driving Championship over at Western Fair? Yeah, we're very excited. Um, and we've been uh, lucky enough to host this event a few times before. Uh, it's always a, a wonderful addition to our schedule. So when we got the news this year that we were chosen as the host again, uh, our team was tremendously excited. Uh, it really fits beautifully in our schedule. Uh, nice way to wrap up the end of April and gives us a, a big kickstart into May, uh, which is our busiest month here. And of course leads up to our signature event, the Camelot Classic on, on May 31st. So uh, tremendously excited, especially when you look at the lineup we're gonna have. Uh, I think it's gonna be one of the best days of racing you're, you're gonna see, especially on a half mile track in Canada this year. Hey, Gregor, it's good to see you, buddy. It's uh... Um, speaking of your Camelot Classic, I was lucky enough to be there in the infield tent last year and we had a, a great time and it's a, a reminder of how fun it is to be at the track with the, the fans right up close. Your tarmac comes right up to the track and, and it's a, a, a great interactive uh, experience for the fans. Uh, you guys are usually do something with the, the drivers to get them uh, mixed in with the fans a bit. You, you must have something like that planned for tomorrow night as well. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a beehive outside here. And, and as you guys know, with uh, with our race season going through the winter and into the spring, we don't get a lot of time, frankly, to uh, utilize our outdoor area, um, aside from Camlock and, uh, and uh, a couple of nights in May. So, uh, you know, we're, we're a little bit ahead of the game and trying to get our outdoor patio uh, ready to go for tomorrow night. So uh, the guys are busy outside. Uh, we've got the food truck set up out there and that's going to be open uh, tomorrow on track. Uh, we do have our, our popular driver intro that we look forward to at the beginning of the night to kick things off. Going to introduce all the drivers individually and then that gives uh, the on track fans a chance to come on down to the fence, uh, say a quick hello to the guys, wish them luck, uh, maybe get an autograph uh, at the beginning of the night and uh, and of course our dining room uh, tomorrow night. We've got that open. Uh, the event lined up with uh, a trifecta Tuesday promotion that we do once a month. And uh, with that, I think we're at uh, about 350 people in our dining room tomorrow night, which is exceptional for a Tuesday evening at this time of year. So it just tells me there's a lot of excitement around the event and people are, uh, people are going to be out here tomorrow night to cheer the guys off. Nice. That's great to hear. I always say the best thing about uh, going to the racetrack is when there's a big crowd because that usually ensures that people come back again when they get that uh, live racetrack atmosphere. And, and Western Fair has been great for that. Speaking of the drivers, though, um, I understand that you were able to uh, get them all to forego their afternoon nap the other day and, and join you guys on the draft call. I think uh, you sat in on that. Were there any uh, interesting tidbits or surprises or, or funny moments that you could share with us? Yeah, well, again, I think it's remarkable that you were able to get the guys to, to forgo the nap, as you said, and, and uh, to <laughs> all be there on time, which was quite impressive uh, as well. So uh, that tells me that they're excited about the event, and uh, and I think they were eager to take part in the draft. Uh, it adds a whole new wrinkle to the event, in my opinion. I think it's a, it's a fantastic addition to it. Uh, very interesting uh, little uh, tidbit here, a little anecdote. The first overall pick in the draft went to Travis Henry in the first uh, leg in race number three. He opted for Handbag of Cheese. He's a horse he knows well, not knowing what the post position was going to be. And uh, as fate would have it, when the random draw was generated, post seven for that one in the uh, first leg. So, you know, had he known what post he was going to get ahead of time, might have gone in a different direction, who knows. But that adds a whole other layer of intrigue to the event, in my opinion, and uh, I think uh, helps create a lot of parity throughout the competition. 
Absolutely. Uh, one last thing from me, I, I'll put you on the spot a bit here and, and hopefully you don't need to be uh, politically correct and you can uh, jump in with, with a, a good answer. Give us, the, uh, give us your projected top two finishers. Who do you see qualifying from uh, this event and heading on to the, uh, the NDC, which is going to take place uh, July 5th at uh, Trois-Rivières? Well, uh, it might sound politically incorrect, uh, correct, but, uh, you know, I, I, and I would, if I had a real strong opinion, I, I wouldn't mind sharing it, but I, I truly think this is, this is up for grabs uh, coming in. You've got to look at James McDonald. Uh, his resume speaks for itself, uh, driving with tremendous confidence. He's a former world, world driving champion, so he knows what it takes along the way. And he's got a good lineup. I, I, I like the horses he has and, and the post positions tomorrow. So I think he's got some great opportunities, including the very first um, race where he drives Maryland from post three, a horse that's been in, uh, in really good form. Uh, Tyler Borth, of course, it's been a real breakthrough a uh, couple of years for him. Still drives regularly here, but now has uh, you know established himself firmly on the Mohawk Park circuit as well. So I think he's a big player. He's also got a good lineup, but I'm telling you, um, I wouldn't be shocked if anybody were to win it. Uh, there's no one that I think uh, is really up against it. I think they've all got some real good opportunities along the way, and it's just going to come down to a little bit of racing luck, I think, and uh, the guy that's on his game on the right day. Yeah, as you touched on, Greg, obviously the random uh, post position draw, I think that in the draft itself, I think that really changed the landscape of this event in comparison to other years. But, you know, you touched on the dining room and being um, full of people and we're hoping the track, there's a lot of people um, there in person. But for those who can't make it in person, kind of touch on uh, what broadcasting options um, people have to be watching this event. Well, the regular Tuesday specials will be back. Uh, our track announcer, Shannon Sugar Doyle, of course, uh, has a big following on the social media channels as well, and, uh, and our colleague, Rob Reed Jr. Um, they provide the uh, analysis for the in-house show uh, each and every Tuesday. Uh, so they'll be taking people through the simulcast. And uh, COSA TV has added uh, uh, an additional show to their lineup this season. Uh, wasn't scheduled initially, but they have added in the driver challenge. So that's gonna be a lot of fun. Myself, uh, Mark McKelvey, John, uh, you'll be joining us as well. So uh, great to have you on board. And I believe we've got a special guest uh, that we haven't unveiled yet to, to help us with that throughout the competition. So uh, many great ways to watch online, of course, with that enhanced coverage. Uh, and for those on track, uh, we've got, as mentioned, the dining room open. We're going to open our main level uh, tomorrow as well. So uh, added seating there and access in and out of the grandstand from there. And of course, the, the food truck going on the patio as well. Now we're just hoping for the good weather to go with it. I'm, I'm glad you noticed there, Greg, that you knew that uh, Rollis was going to be on site. So make sure you have a few extra tellers handy and expect a, uh, a spike in your on-track uh, handle. We've got his own machine set aside. It's all <laughs> private. Always treated like a VIP, Greg. And uh, <laughs> thanks a lot for joining us today. We really look forward to this event. And uh, you guys do always do a great job putting forth the races. I mean, you, you, you guys legitimately put the race and raceway over there. So uh, always a great product, great wagering menu, and um, we're looking forward to it. Thanks, guys. Really appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, our team's uh, pumped as well. It's going to be a lot of fun. All right, we're going to welcome in our next guest, and none other than Sugar Doyle, a track announcer at the West, at Western Fair uh, Raceway. And, you know, Sugar, what better way to have than you to talk and handicap uh, this card, uh, obviously, do a great job handicapping the card on a nightly basis, especially Tuesday nights with uh, Robert Reed. You two are just uh, you two are must watch TV on Tuesdays, uh, Sugar. And first and foremost, how are you? And how excited are you? Uh, you know what? Uh, doing very good today. Monday, the the sun is out shining. Beauty day here in London. Uh, come in, got a look at the track crew putting down a bit of material uh, on the track. So the the surface it, it's great right now. I'm feeling great. I'm so pumped. Uh, about this. I've been calling races for almost 20 years, and I can honestly say uh, this is the deepest driving championship I have ever been involved with. Yeah, we definitely feel the same way here. And I think with the, the change in format, right, we were touching on it um, before we had Greg on, and even with you on, just in terms of the random post position draw and the draft order, um, do you think that's also adding to the depth of this competition as a whole? 100%. I mean, uh, drivers were able to pick their horses, and sure, they might have a real nice horse in a race, 
But uh, you know what? You draw seven, you draw eight. Those are the toughest posts uh, to overcome here in London. Uh, six and seven, I think drivers would almost rather that post versus the trailing spot. We've seen some heavy favorites go down to defeat when leaving from that trailing spot this meet in London. Yeah, we were looking at post position stats on the SC website there for, for Western Fair, and the eight uh, it is not good. I don't know uh, if they have they have trouble getting up right up on the one's helmet and staying on it through that tight first turn or, or whatever reason. But, yeah, and a number of the guys, their first draft picks and second draft picks did draw seven and eight. It's almost like an equalizer. I don't know about you. I don't know whether, personally, would you rather have – your top picks get the rail in two hole and almost get your wins in the bank? Or would you rather have your long shots draw the rail in two or three hole and maybe scab a third or a fourth that you didn't expect? It's it's tough, tough to say. I think it's the latter, Dan. I think if you've got longer shots, you want to be sitting in the front half of the field over half mile track, right? But if you've got some heavy favorites and they're leaving post six, post seven, you got to be sending. If you're leaving from that trailing spot, you're at the mercy of what's in front of you. Mm -hmm. you, you know what? I want to just touch on uh, Dan's point about the statistics about the trailing position and even uh, the rail position. The rail position is winning at close to 20%, I believe, um, right, Dan? Yeah. So it, it's interesting to see. Do you happen to know why, uh, Sugar, being a viewer and calling the races for, for so many years over there, do you know why the, the trailing positions maybe can't get a little bit closer to the action? Because we know that speed obviously will dominate uh, a track like Western Fair and having the rail position and being able to push out is such an advantage. But how come the trailing positions can't get a little bit closer to the action, would you think? It all depends on speed. I mean, if, if you've got the rail horse and, you know, he can get to the quarter in 28, well, the eight horse is likely going to be plugged in and trying to stay close, sitting well. You're at the mercy of what's in front of you. If you've got a rail horse that uh, can't get off the wings – uh, as well as the four or the outside boat. I mean, you're at the mercy of what's in front of you. And I, I think that's the that's become the the obstacle for the trailing horses here in London. And one more thing, um, Sugar, I just kind of wanted to touch on the familiarity of this competition. You mentioned the depth of it. I think we've got a really talented driving colony mm -hmm. um, participating. But for you, how much value do you put in guys like Travis Henry, uh, Brett McDonald, uh, Tyler Borth, and Garrett Rooney, who have uh, who are more familiar with the horse colony over at uh, London? Do you put a lot of stock in that when you're making your selections? Oh, 100%. Uh, I mean, uh, a guy like Tyler, uh, Garrett Rooney, uh, Travis Henry, uh, the, the locals, they're going to know if a horse can live on the outside. They're going to know if a horse is gonna get that, has got that big final quarter speed or, or even if they got some gate leave. I mean, if you've got your uh, guys coming in from Woodbine Mohawk Park, I mean, they've been here before, Bob McClure, Louis Fittipa, uh, James McDonald. Uh, we've seen them hop on and uh, find trips for horses that you've never seen here before. Uh, Louis was with us for a driving championship on board a, a big mare, I think, for uh, a Glenn Hardy a few years ago. Stepped up, I mean, dropped her about three or four seconds. So... We're going to see some things tomorrow evening from horses likely that we've never seen here yet this meet. You know, Sugar, I, uh, you're, you're an announcer. You're obviously a fan of the game, and I know you can't – you're not supposed to cheer for anybody, but deep down inside, you know, you've got three or four local guys. you got two of them. This is their first RDC, but you're a Maritimer at heart, and you got James McDonald from the Maritimes. What uh, – uh, is it going to be – Tough to separate uh, calling the races from cheering for your 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 favorites, or is obviously uh, you can't really cheer for anybody. But tell us what you think. I don't know. Am I, am I a homer if I say <laughs> you know I'm liking the chances for Garrett Rooney, uh, Todder Boris, Travis? You know what? I like my locals here in London. I, I've really appreciated what Garrett Rooney has been doing in the sulky over the last few seasons, coming in off a career best year. And he does it kind of quietly. And he shows up with big prices at times. Uh, uh, well, even up to this day, I've called him the upset specialist in London. So for me, Garrett Rooney, yeah, I'm going to side with him and, and hope he does well. But any one of nine in this competition, there's nobody, nobody is kind of jumping off the page in any of the races. Well, at Trot Magazine, I'd like to thank you on behalf of us two from Trot for giving us an honest answer. We hate fluff answers, and, and we appreciate that you can go out there and say, you know, a little bit. I'd love to see Garrett Rooney step up. Good for you. Garrett Rooney. I'm on the, the Garrett Rooney bandwagon <laughs> for tomorrow evening. 
There you go. All right, let's get started with some of the action, uh, Sugar. Let's. Uh, we're going to hear some of your thoughts. So we're going to kick start maybe talking about the late uh, pick five uh, because races three through eleven are all RDC events. So kind of sure. want to touch on the late pick five and the late pick four, and, and we'll get your thoughts on who you think a best bet, uh, who your best bet of the evening is, and maybe a maybe a value play. But why don't you let us know who your first uh, what you're what you're thinking of doing in leg number one, Sugar. Leg one, that would be race number seven of 11 to start up the pick five play. I wanted to go deep here, but I couldn't go deep in all of these final five races. So I, I singled up my top selection being the four, RJ Hooker. I mentioned Louis Philippe. I've seen what he can do coming into London when hopping on a horse that he, he maybe hasn't uh, sat behind before. RJ Hooker. Uh, uh, it's my hunch play on the night. If he can make it through leg one of the pick five play, I think we can get paid pretty good because uh, this is a this is a great sequence to be playing. You know what, Sugar? I, I They talk about horses being brave. You just braving me up because I do watch Western Fair when I can, but I, I have to be honest, I don't watch it all the time. And that's my pick in the seventh race. And I, I didn't wow. know if I was – but, hey, you're the man from Western Fair – and you just made me brave. Maybe I do know what I'm doing when I did my card last night. He's a seven-time winner last season, 58-2 and two over at London. If he can find that form, there's not a horse in there that can go with him. And most importantly, he was Louis Wall's top pick in that race, too. So that's uh, he, got, he gave uh, he gave R.J. Hooker the vote of confidence there. So um, great starting spot to work with the post uh, number four. And, yeah, I think he might be a popular single. I should add, John, you know, we talked about the rail. We talked about 6-7, the trailing spot. Post 4 for me, that's where you want to be here, right behind the car in London. Perfect, perfect. Well, great, Interesting. great starting draw to work with uh, for R.J. Hooker. Quick thoughts on Daylon Midnight, though. Uh, Trigger, did you give that one any luck? Daylon Midnight, Trevor Henry hopping on, good set of trotting hands, and I'm sure trainer Jen Pinkerton will have all systems go for the six Daylon Midnight. Another one to think about, but I couldn't use them all, right? You can't blame me there. I love that you're taking a stand to kickstart uh, the late pick five. And sure. let's go on to the second leg in race number eight, to Sugar. All right. I went inside here. I think the speed is going to come from maybe the three raising a rocket. Trevor Henry steps up. Like the closing speed on the one shady memories, and here you got the eight early bird special, uh, first time for trainer Lindsay Kerr. But again, it's that trailing spot, and there's not a whole lot of speed in front of her. Uh, shady memories had the rail last time out, sitting fifth by seven at the quarter. So that's what we're going to see from those trailing horses tomorrow night. Tough to get away in a good spot. So look for three rays in the rocket to be launching early in the eighth. I'm using one, two, three, and eight the inside to to get away. Well, <laughs> okay. This is very interesting, though. You are gonna, you're not gonna use Dell, uh, you're not gonna use Dell Diggity whatsoever, who uh, could probably be one of the best, um, best claimers right now. You know what? Uh, missed a few weeks of action coming in from the big track. Uh, Pam Forgy condition, nine to five in the morning line. I like chasing some prices, so that's what I'm doing there. I've left that seven. You know what? Drivers Championship. It, unless you've got blinding gate speed from post six or post seven, you're on the outside looking in. Yeah, I think this one's a pretty big wild card. I will say Shady Memories looked really, really good when she was able to uh, shake loose in the late stages, uh, Sugar. She was uh, definitely one that I wanted to monitor next start, but uh, mm -hmm. tough group. I believe so, too. It's it, This is quite a sequence. A right, race number nine, leg three of this uh this pick five, and I found this one to be a pretty tough race. So where'd you land here, Sugar? Oh, the trotters. Uh, all these trots, they're, they're such great events on the night. Of course, you're going to have early speed on the rail, Pierce Wave Hanover. Next door to that, Junior, Travis Cullen hopping on board. Uh, for me, I'm seeing closer. And if you're looking for a closer, it's got to be the six Texaco man, James McDonald. It's my top selection in there. But the inside two, they're going to be in play. They're going to be trying to stick around late. One, two, six for me in that middle leg. Any thoughts uh, there in race number nine? Well, I was going to save it for later because John and I are dissecting a few more races. But I'm going to use Sugar. You can't answer this. But I'm going to use you as my witness. Mr. Rollis here was turping me a little earlier for being uh, what he considers to be a little old. So I have a trivia question for him here. Number one, Pierce Wave Hanover. Where's the name come from? Hot shot? I, I couldn't tell you that. So now way to make me look bad. Like, I, I can't believe he doesn't sugar. Do you know the answer? The only thing that comes to me is Ron Pierce. It is, and I was at the race, and it wasn't that long ago. 
It was at the Red Mile, and it was a race-off in the Kentucky Philly Futurity, and it was between Ron Pierce and uh, Tron Smedshammer. And when Pierce went by Smedshammer in the stretch, he gave him a little wave like in that. the two-horse race-off. Oh, yeah. And it caused some – I mean, it was classic Ron Pierce, and it's a historical moment that people just love. But, of course, some people thought it was a little – what over the top but it was enough that hanover called a horse pierce wave hanover uh, not too long after me myself it's one of the best things i've ever seen in a horse racing and i've been following racing for over 40 years i loved it yeah i, I did too it was classic there's ron a, pierce and we miss him there's our history yeah. lesson for the day courtesy of dan fisher <laughs> i just want your quick thoughts though um sugar whole, whole nother did you give that one consideration uh racing on lasix uh for I the did, second time you know it, it is second time lasix but uh you know what had the rail last time out didn't get away up close uh, i don't know he's got my guy garrett rooney on board no, so it. Yeah. It, it could be one of those upset factors now you got me thinking i i had it three <laughs> deep but i got four circles in there and the fourth circle is three whole nother so you might have just touched on something there john you, you would hate to go dead if that's the case wouldn't you <laughs> I better throw them in just because you brought them up. There you go. Well, race number 10, and I find this to be a pretty interesting race. And I say that from a morning line um, aspect perspective, uh, Sugar. Sure. I think you see Matt's tuition right now favored as the two to one morning line. I think you could get some value on this horse despite him being the morning line favorite. So interested to hear your thoughts on this race as a whole. You know what? He's always in the hunt. He draws well. Brett McDonald obviously sending here. Because uh, the horse to his left, Mac the Knife, doesn't have a whole lot of pop mm -hmm. off the wings, does get a, a two-hole, but he had the rail last time out, uh, was able to sit third. But you won't see Mac the Knife blasting. You might see the one, Township Willie, on the rail blasting through there. But Matt's tuition, likely going to be the speed ball in there for Brett McDonald. Uh, Township Willie, I've got pegged for a nice trip in there. The eight, Ryan Klein, he's your closer. James McDonald with a few closers on the day, but... Uh, uh, Matt's tuition, uh, yeah, I, I, I believe I've got him pegged as a player, yeah. Four deep in there with a one, two, three, and eight. Matt's tuition for your speed. Township Willie is like going fourth time Lasix and big improvements in recent starts. He's your dark one for there. Uh, demand a bit of a price, maybe four to one, five to one, but Township Willie, I believe, sitting on a big one for Bob McClure. What direction did you go, though, quickly? Uh, I'm going to save. I'm going to save. I got a bit of a long shot one there, but I'm going to make Sugar watch our whole uh, program too, because I don't want to tip him off and have him kill my odds. So <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna save that one for a little later. But uh, at the same time, that's the tenth race, the second last leg. So I think the, there's reason to watch the scoreboard and think that guys might at that time of the card drive a little bit differently if they're sitting third or fourth and they got to make a big move. It doesn't always work. It doesn't mean you have more horse just because you need more horse. But guys might drive a little differently than if they're close to being in that top two to qualify for the, the Nationals. You know, I was thinking with uh, – I was thinking I might get some value on Matt's tuition. I'll spoil it a little bit here. He's probably going to be my value play this evening. And I say that because I think that the inside two might take some support, Sugar. I think Ryan Clyde coming off back-to-back -back wins – and it being James McDonald's top selection in this race is going to take some support. He's just so brave on the lead, Sugar, and I think if he gets there, it's going to be game over. Matt's tuition, nice horse when uh, on the lead or close to it. He's going to be in play. I, I think he's blasting off the car. Mm -hmm. well, I'm hoping that's the, the case as well. So that's a pretty wide open 10th uh, race, and we're going to go to race number 11, which close things out this evening. And, uh, Sugar, is there one you really like in here? There's two I really like in here, and I'm, I'm kind of on the fence. I know you asked me last night that uh, maybe you'll have a, a best bet or, or something to go with. You know what? My best bet on the night is probably in this race, and it's probably the exactor box of one and six, both of them. I, I see them sitting one, two in here. The thing about St. Lance Mischief, bit of a lazy type. If, if he gets in behind the three or four horses, it takes away his best chances. Uh, you can see the, the win. Uh, three back when on the lead all the way. They couldn't get close to him. So this horse gets really brave when on or near the lead. Six highway vagabond. He's got a blast. And you're getting a, a decent value on the morning line, four to one. Travis Henry will be sending highway vagabond. It's the big class drop factor, the drop and pop, maybe for Team Sumner there. But for me, the best bet is this exactor box in the finale, one and six. I'll tell you, you made me happy again here, Sugar, because... My, my top pick in that race is the one, and 
I owned a mare named Peppermint Patty years ago, and she was a lazy mare. And the best thing that ever happened to her, two words, Trevor Henry. So the one was already my pick. And when you tell me the the biggest downfall the horse has is lazy, well, Trevor Henry never met a lazy horse because he can make them go more than most. So uh, with that added information, I I think the one's going right down the road, and, and I don't see them catching. I'm going to be very interested in watching a score down with Trevor and St. Lance Mischief in that finale. That's that's what I want to see. Yeah. You, you know what? I'll tell you, Dan, if you watch Western Farrow on a regular basis, uh, Sugar is one of the best at calling a score down. When Sugar likes a score down and he mentions it on a broadcast, you better get your HPI bet uh, app ready and uh, start firing. Well, away. he's got his T-shirt on, so he's ready to go. Right on brand. It's right there. It's right there. We love our players, and we, we try to feed them the info that, uh, you know, sometimes it's not featured in the broadcast. If I'm watching a, mm-hmm. a score down, uh, 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 you know, it's not in the broadcast, we got to give that to the players. Is that an endorsement, Sugar? Do you get paid to wear that T-shirt? They should be paying you. <laughs> oh, they look after me pretty good. <laughs> I just want to say one more thing before we let you go, um, Sugar. Give us a value player, you know, a sneaky player throughout this uh Discard. The sneaky player on the night. Like we're going to be. Oh, there it is right there. The sneaky play of the night. Third race, number eight, Velocity Impetuous. Tata board, mm. nine to two morning line. Should be a pretty good price in there. And uh, I'm expecting good things. Jason Libby, that barn is uh, heating up in recent weeks. So there you go. Number eight, Velocity Impetuous, race three. Love it. Coming from the second tier as well. And you know you're going to get some uh, value there uh, from that. Demand trailing. value from the second tier. Yeah. So you and Robbie Reed are going to take care of the action um, live on track. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, we have a great time. You know, we've got a great relationship and uh, we have a lot of fun. You know, it's uh, sometimes, well, you know what? We've been called out. Well, oh, don't like what you said about my horse. Well, you know, you can't fluff everything, right? No, but that means they're listening. That's the most important part. <laughs> Exactly. Well, Sugar, thanks for joining us. Uh, we're looking forward to the action, looking forward to the, the broadcast tomorrow night as well. And I hope you enjoy yourself just as much as everyone else is going to. Oh, you know what? Uh, I'm pumped. And uh, it's probably you're probably going to be able to hear that through the race calls. I mean, it's going to be <laughs> almost like a Camlock classic night atmosphere for me. I, I, I've been looking forward to this one for a long time. They're off and it's on, right, Sugar? You bet. Uh, yeah, you're going to hear some uh, signature calls and uh, a lo- whole lot more. We're, we're going to have a whole lot of fun with this one. As it should be. That's what racing should be. It's a lot of fun. It's going to be a competitive night, and uh, we're really looking forward to it. Sugar, thanks so much for joining us. Your insight is always valued. Thanks so much, fellas. Uh, enjoy the night. I- I- I'm going to have a whole lot of fun with it. Uh, great great to be uh, with you, Tom, here. Have a good one, buddy. Thank you. You too. All right, we're going to continue on. Over here with the handicapping portion of the card, we just uh, finished up with Sugar Doyle, heard his thoughts, uh, some great insight there from Sugar as always. And now the pressure's on us, Dan. We're going to have to get things uh, going, hopefully provide some winners. But just before we get through the you know, the duration of this card, I wanted to ask on your thoughts, how much – typically guys want to put stock on the first selection of, of the draft, but because the post position order was a random draw uh, – do you heavily factor that into your handicapping? Because I didn't personally. When when I started to, I expect that I had the sheet in front of me where everybody was drafted. And in certain races, as I, I, I speak to later, I did. But right off in the first race, the horse that I picked to win, and I think you do as well, was fifth pick. So I looked at it and I thought, if if this driver got this horse fifth, in the very first race, maybe maybe I won't put too much stock into it. So I think in some races I did, and in other races I didn't lean on quite so yeah, much. Yeah, I was certainly surprised at um, the order for this uh, for the opening leg with this man. We're gonna. Uh, that's a perfect segue here to race number three. Here it's a Phillies and mares claiming eight thousand um, dollars, and we landed on the top same top pick, uh, Dan, and that's the three horse of Maryland. And kind of talk about what you like about her. Well, I I. Uh, one thing in our program, it says um, line to be announced. And on the 19th, uh, this mare did have the seven hole and did win comfortably. You'll have to uh, get the updated uh, line off of track it or, but yeah, the, it, she's the class of the field with 165,000 made lifetime. And in these lower end claimers, I will often look to that, to some back class, mark of 52 and four, um, but picks up James McDonald, how somehow, they let James have this horse uh, fifth in the draft. Um, they didn't know, fair enough, that she was going to go win on April 19th. Um, but literally, 
uh, she wouldn't fit this class if she wasn't entered before the, she raced the other night. Um, she has now won her way out of that condition. So this is a freebie for her. You know, and then I just love the early speed that we saw from her, right? I know we can't see – on our program pages right now, we don't see the line T TBA, but, I mean, she was able to get out of there pretty handily mm -hmm. from post number seven. She gets better post position to work with. Uh, I want to touch on quickly about one other uh, rival here in this race. It was Travis Henry's top selection, handbag of cheesies. I actually did get a comment from Isaac Waxman uh, before we did this show just asking maybe what went amiss. He just said that he thinks this mare was used a little bit too hard uh, early, and uh, she just couldn't respond well for the rest of the mile. Now – Here's the thing. You drop post seven now. If yeah. you want to get involved in the thick of things early, Travis is going to have to get her revved up. And, um, you know, if that's the case, she didn't respond too well to it last time out. So how's she going to fare tonight? No, Greg and uh, Sugar both both spoke about that. I mean, Sugar said, if you got six or seven, you got to leave a thousand or else you're going to be out there. And, uh, yeah, I, I mean, Isaac always has them ready. He's got a, a 410 batting average again this year. He's He's been over 400 the last few years, but... The seven hole at Western Fair is a great equalizer, and and I, I don't like her chances to win the race. Um, it's unfortunate for Travis because he used his first pick on her, but that's that's the neat thing about the draw. Yeah, he has success driving for Isaac Wax. You know, he's uh, done some really good things over on the beef track circuit, but I think Maryland, she's going to be a single for me in all month, multi legs, uh, Dan. For sure, for sure. So moving on to the uh, the fourth race, um, I didn't have the conditions in front of me. It's another eight claimer, and this is again for the non winners. Now these, when you're handicapping, in my opinion. The lower claimers at these tracks, some of them are for non-winners, some of them are for non-winners of 40,000 life, and some of them are for winners over. And there's a big, big difference. If you can do in the lower one, it, it doesn't mean that you can always do in the in the higher one. Um, but my pick here is uh, I am going to choose Bob McClure to get on the board with the five horse, Pain for Prez. Um, this horse hadn't been in a claimer since August of 2022 until last week and uh, has a leading trainer. Uh, it's a class drop really to drop into the claimer now. And uh, if you look, uh, this horse was off 49 days and this is its third start back now. And third start back, usually they've been given a couple of tighteners, um, gets Bob McClure, gets a decent post in post five. And, and, and that's my pick yourself. I think that one's got a really good shot. Uh, Dan, I struggled this race a little bit, but I ultimately landed on the six horse generally Louis Wahop supports tonight, and Louis has history with this uh, this nine year old son of sports writer. Right, he's guided him to a couple of wins in the past, uh, obviously for different connections. But I think he's familiar with this guy. And sometimes, you know what? Sometimes horses just need a new set of hands or a new change of scenery. Uh, last few efforts, uh, you know, kind of struggling towards some of those bottom lines. It was much better last time out. Mm -hmm. Was able to secure a two hole trip and uh, wasn't able to get to to Whiskey Key. But I do think that maybe the new set of hands is going to be a nice change of scenery for him. So generally, is my topic. But I will say this. I maybe take a look at Fonan as a, as a sneaky player, and they're adding Lasix for the first time. I'm always interested to see how maybe that's going to factor in and how that's going to improve him. He did have four wins uh, last year, Dan. Yeah. Um, your top pick is my second pick, mm -hmm. actually, General Lee. And and what I would say about that uh, driver change, I looked at the lines on this horse, and I don't know Dwayne Spitzig, but my guess is that this horse is a, a bit of a pet. Um, Dwayne has claimed this horse back on either three or four uh, different occasions. And he drives this horse himself. And uh, I, I honestly have no idea uh, of Dwayne's capability as a driver, but he has 22 career wins. And um, Louis has, I don't know how many thousand. So, yeah, a different set of hands be interesting. But uh, usually when a, a horse gets claimed back that many times, it's a, it's a family favorite. And uh, sometimes maybe Dwayne takes a little easy on him on the racetrack too. Some of these horses, as they get old and set in their ways, uh, they'll, they'll take advantage of you if you let them, but I don't think Louis is going to let them take advantage, so it wouldn't surprise me. He's going to have to probably get him a little bit motivated uh, from the six-year-old too, but again, yeah. I like the fact that there's some familiarity there from driving him in the past, so uh, for sure. Lee will be my top selection there. Moving on to race number five, I found this to be, this closed out the early pick five though, um, Dan, but I found this to be such an interesting race, and it's because there's horses who have a legitimate shot here, but the way the, the, post, the, way the draw kind of stacked up here, this might be a a first turn battle here for the lead. I'm really curious to hear which direction you went in. Are, are you going to give me your pick first? My first, oh, my first pick. Sorry, I'm going to go. That's with, all right. I'm going to go with Favero Sealster. Actually, uh, sorry, I was so eager to hear your thoughts. <laughs> I forgot to give, give you mine, but I actually landed on the two Favero um, Sealster and kind of went that way, Dan, because I think Excalibur Sealster is going to want early positioning. I think journalistic. He's better when he's on the lead, but 
how's he going to get there? If Excalibur Silster is likely going to uh, jet on out of there, I think, for Vero Silster. I mean, he's not the quickest off the gate, but he's a horse who I think is going to be sitting in the top four. Then Derby Dillon, by virtue of the rail draw, Travis might get a little bit uh, aggressive with this guy. But I think for Vero Silster, I think he can sit, get away third. I think he can go slow first over grind and get the job done. But uh, journalistic is one that I, I'm really intrigued with, with the trainer change to, to Jason Libby. See how he responds there. He's racing really well. He's been favored in six, seven, eight consecutive starts. So he's definitely one that the betters uh, love to back. But you got Trevor Henry aboard. I, new trainer. That's uh, one that really intrigues me, but I'm going to go with Vero Silster. I, I couldn't agree with you more here, kid. The uh, This is going to be a war. Mm -hmm. This is going to be one of the, to me, on paper, maybe the most exciting race of the night because the three, four, and five are all going to roll. Mm -hmm. uh, you got high percentage trainers. The, the the averages on the three, four, and five, 436, 327, 410. These horses all show gate speed, and this is a driver's competition. But James's horse can leave enough. And I see the three, four, and five going to war in front of him, and the two wins first over with re in regularity. And I see James coming a slow first over, and and I, I really think uh, he gets his second win of the of the night here because they're but they're definitely going to race. So we're both on the same horse here. So uh, we're going to see how if race three doesn't go too well um, when we're both on Maryland, maybe it's uh, maybe we, the people can fade uh, the Vero Silster race number five. But definitely it's going to be interesting to see how that shakes out. And hopefully uh, James can kind of let the action settle here. For sure. Now, the sixth race is a uh, a trot for knowers of 4,000 last three. And I found this to be a very difficult, uh, a difficult one to handicap. But I'm looking at. Uh, one of the local guys getting his uh, a, a good chance here, Garrett Rooney on the four, heavy duty. Now, heavy duty. Now, the trainer is Natalie Elliott. She's a friend of mine, and that's not why I'm picking the horse, but it will maybe put me in her good books nonetheless. Um, he's just a classy horse. He's got lots of gate speed. Uh, he knows the track. The driver knows the track. It's really a wide open event, but he does have gate speed, and he's consistent. Um, he doesn't always win. He hits the board a lot. He's a nice check getter. Um but uh, I think uh, Bob McClure got a little bit screwed here on the on the draw because this was Bob's Arrakis was Bob's first pick, and I my guess is with the gate speed that he has, he didn't want the eight hole. No, Bob that, probably wanted anything but the eight hole. And he loves race gone and a half. He has so much success doing so. I think if you draw on the gate. He would definitely go off as the race favorite. To, yeah. He'd be tough to catch. He'd but probably be my pick, too. Your top pick, heavy dude. He's got a lot of gate speed now. He hasn't been racing to the capability that we've been accustomed to seeing um, even as recent as two years ago. This is a much better horse than maybe his lines uh, have indicated. And he picks up a new driver for the first time in quite some time. Uh, Ryan DeRoche has been a regular pilot on mm -hmm. him for a handful of starts. I think we saw Dan Clemenza. Uh, I think he's the most recent uh, driver other than Ryan DeRoche to drive him. So I'm interested to see how uh, Garrett Rooney uh, gets along with this guy here tonight. But... I went back to I went back to James McDonald on the rail Monteverdi. I think mm -hmm. I love the rail pos a starting position for him. Uh, I think this horse can get brave on the lead. He's pretty handy. He likes to close. I, I think James has options from the rail, so I'm interested to see what he elects to do. But uh, this is a pretty competitive field, right? The boss man, he's a really talented horse, but tough to get uh, involved from out there. But this is this is a really I, really talented group in wide open race. I agree with your pick, and I had James marked as a sleeper here. Now this is James seventh. He had seventh pick here, yeah. and he got this horse. And I don't know if the, the racing gods are just on James' side, uh, but it, he, he has been second and third in this class, basically, in recent weeks. Gets Jampai and the rail. Um, it's tough to go against. I was 418, 481. Now, you do get each post at least once. So yes. We should be reminded. But with some of the main race um, contenders, James has actually drawn pretty favorable over some of these uh, races. For sure. And moving on to race uh, number seven. You're um, up, kid. I found this to be a pretty uh, – Pretty wide open race. We heard Sugar's thoughts earlier on RJ Hooker uh, being his single. Uh, I went to the six horse Dale on midnight. Um, I know the last couple lines maybe don't look the most inspiring, but he's been really competitive over at this uh, at this class. He's been you see a couple second place finishes. You get Trevor Henry aboard. Um, for me, I found this to be a wide open race, so I wanted to go with a horse who's competitive at this class. And again, Trevor Henry. I mean, that always helps. Well, I did my homework on on, and I did when when we had uh, Sugar on earlier. I did say RJ Hooker was my was my top pick here, the four horse. He has won, uh, he's had 28 starts in the Steve Bosnitz uh, barn, and we all know Steve's uh, excellent with the trotters. He's six six wins and 28 starts um, for the Bosnitz stable. Uh, and his only poor finishes really uh, recently are when he either had a real bad post or a real bad trip. And uh, he's got the four hole tonight, and he's got uh, Louis Philippois. And uh, I, I think he'll be the best, but I did have... Um, 
uh, your horse marked as a, a bit of a sleeper here, and I did my homework. Uh, his last five starts in this class, he has two wins in three seconds. Yeah, that's, so that's exactly it. Just really gets along at this level. I wish he drew a little bit better, but uh, I think RJ Hooker is a main contender. I also think Dale on Midnight, I think um, he's definitely one that you want to use on the ticket. You got Trevor Henry, too, and he's been around this track once or twice, I think. Oh, yeah, he's, I think he's got quite a bit of success. I think so. So now I get the eighth race, which is uh, one of the only races all night. I, I couldn't narrow it down to one, and uh, I, I just had a tough... I like the three and the five here. Now, again, here's a seventh pick. Somehow Trevor must have intimidated them in the draft a little bit, but he got raised in a rock at seventh. And now he didn't know she was going to draw the three hole, but she was two to five in here last week, I believe, mm -hmm. in the same class, and he got her seventh. So I'm not sure how that works. But uh, James, I, I, and I like James on the five, something royal. Now, James has driven this horse twice and has a win in a second. I believe both of them were at Mohawk. Mm -hmm. But um, he is familiar with the horse. He has gate speed. And uh, the ones that were picked first and second here, Travis Cullen had first pick. Brett McDonald had second pick. And unfortunate for them, they got the eight and the seven hole. And that is, again, just the luck of the draw. So you get your first overall pick or in your second overall pick, and you get you get a bad draw. So I think that uh, I see it lining up 5-3. Uh, I think it's going to sit 5-3 around the track. James Trevor. And I think Raisin a Rocket's a little better off the helmet. So on my multi-legs, I will definitely be using um, both of them. I, I, I thought that the two and the seven both show show decent form, but uh, I'm three and five is my picks. I find it really interesting that you and Sugar both didn't use that Del Diggity um, on your t – well, I'm not sure if they're going to use him on your tickets. Sugar didn't no. on the tickets, but Del Diggity's probably the best um, – she's probably the best eight claimer in the sport right now, right? Eight yeah. to ten claimer. I mean, she's been so dominant. A judge's transportation scratch uh, last time out, but you know she had the second tier from Flambro and things didn't work out. So she's got post seven. She's got uh, we know she's got enough early goal to maybe get activated and involved early. But I mean, I'm not sure who's going to be my top pick between the seven and the one right now. I really liked Shady Memories' effort last time out. I think we touched on it. She um, she snuck. She kind of got free a little bit late. Yep. Uh, late in the mile, she got a little loose and she was pacing really really well. So. I think for me, it's going to be between one and seven. I'm not quite sure where I'm going to lean uh, exactly yet, but I'll tell you what, though, Dan. Nice nice uh, touch on something royal. James really gets along with this mare, but, uh, you know, and she's had success over on the London Oval, but early bird special, that's one that I'm really intrigued with, with uh, the new barn change and a new set of hands. Again, you know, this horse not a big win contender, but second tier kind of scares me because Shady Memories doesn't really have so much early footing, mm -hmm. but uh, definitely one that I want to watch out for, if not for uh, tomorrow, tomorrow night, um, that I'll be watching for going forward. Hundred percent. It was Travis Cullen's first pick, and and yeah, the the one doesn't look like she leaves a whole lot, and that does put the eight behind the 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 eight ball, so to speak. Um, Del Diggity, yeah, it's the seven. I just seven. I have to love a horse to to use it um, on the half mile track from the seven. She could go a monster mile and finish third, and and uh, so I just play the percentages, I guess, yeah. but. It'll get you a better price than it would if she if she had the rail she'd be two to five yeah nine to five morning line favorites I think that she'll def she'll definitely warrant some uh, some respect from the betting public but I think she could park out of there and be a main contender like I said she's just so sharp right now I think she's got the best form out of anybody uh, we're gonna move on to race uh, number nine and I found this to be a pretty found this to be a pretty tricky race uh, here Dan I ultimately landed on the three horse hole another I'm just one of those things where I'm just kind of intrigued by racing on Lasix for the second time. I thought it was a, a better effort last time out. I thought that was a much more improved um, effort than what we saw the last couple of outings prior. So I think Lasix did uh, really help um, really helped this four-year-old and get Garrett Rooney aboard. Yeah. So I think that we've seen him with Sugar Touch on it. He's uh, having so much success over at um, Western Fair and he can he can play the role of upsetter here, I think, but uh, it's a whole nother. That's my topic. What about you? I'm not going to disagree with you, although it's a whole nother was my second choice here, uh, actually. Um, he's down in class, and his last start at this level, he was a winner. And has the three-hole, has Garrett Rooney. So, like you said, but I am going to stick with my trivia horse that I gave you, Pierce Wave Hanover. Uh, he's, he's an old classy horse. He's got the rail. This is Brett McDonald's uh, chance to get on the board, as I see it. It was his first overall pick. Um, Brett does drive there. He, must, he maybe hasn't driven the horse, but he must be familiar with the horse. High percentage trainer, half-million-dollar earner. And in this horse's last six starts, he's had the rail twice. He's won by open lengths both times. Um, he's got the rail again. He obviously likes it. I see him going down the road, and and I don't think they'll they'll get him. But God, I've been wrong before. You know what, Brett McDonald's? He's got some pretty uh, 
pretty nice drives to work with this evening. I think we could say that about a few drivers here tonight. Again, that's the luxury of the draft and um, the random uh, post position draw that we have to offer. And race number race 10. Race number 10. I guess it's me to go first. And this is where my long shot, my long shot of the night. Now, I don't know the horse all that well, um, but the number four horse with Tyler Borth, again, it was his seventh. He had seventh pick in this race. Um, but I, it, it's a wide open race. I think the best horse in the race is Ryan Klein, and that was James's first pick. Now, James, as we've discussed, he had a fifth-round pick that looks good. He's had a seventh-round pick that's looked good. This is his first-round pick at the trailing eight spot mm -hmm. behind a horse who is never better than fifth or sixth at the quarter. Um, so I think the way I see this race going, I see Travis Collins sending the five dark moves, and I see Tyler Borth, who, who won with this horse back-to-back -back in January, um, if Tyler Borth can get away, I, I see it lining up 5-4. And if they can get away on James, James is going to be coming, and James has the best horse. But I've marked it 4 with the 5-8 because I think the 4 and 5 might get away. Uh, the front end um, might hold up, and James is going to have too far to come uh, leaving from the the uh, trailing post. What about yourself? Maximus Power, though, I mean, hopefully you have to figure he's going to be even tighter um having missed all that time. In the yeah, he had 48 start, so. days off yeah. before his last start. So that was a tightener mm -hmm. and time to go. And I, you know what, you talked about speed and I went to the um, post position just right inside of uh, your top pick. I went to Matt's tuition here. He's the morning line favorite at two to one, but I think you could get value on this guy because I think the money's going to be spread around in some different directions. I could see the eight taking some money. I could see the inside two Township really and knock the knife uh, taking some support. Not sure what to make of Maximus Power just yet and from the top board, but that's exactly what you said. I think he will be a value player. And, Matt Stushin, even if you get uh, five to two on uh, on this guy, I think that is value. He's a horse that's so brave on the engine. I think Brett's going to be aggressive with this guy from the three hole, and uh, if he gets there, I think he might be really tough to pass and beat. Well, Giannis, and and just in case people don't know, his name's not John; it's Giannis. He's Greek, but everyone calls him John. What does your mother call you? And she calls me Giannis. She calls her Giannis. So if if the mother calls him Giannis, I call him Giannis. So Giannis. I know you like the long shots, and I'm not going to come in here and pick favorites all night. I knew I had to have one long shot in here, uh, or you would not be happy with me, and that's why part of the reason I went to Maximus Power here. You might get a bit of a price, man. You might finish up the track, but you got to take a shot once. Oh, no, I love it, Dan. I think I like about taking chances. Uh, you took a chance on me, hiring me, so I think it worked out pretty well for you. Oh, uh, so he says. <laughs> closing out things in race number 11, um, close things off. I think we're all on the same horse. I think a lot of us like this one. Trevor Henry from the rail, St. Lad's Mischief. I think it's all systems go from here. Yeah, I had it I had it lining up one, two. I think Tyler Borth is gonna get this horse away in the two hole. It's gonna sit one, two around the track. But as soon as Sugar said St. Lad's Mischief is lazy, and I looked and saw Trevor Henry, dollar signs went off in my head. Mm -hmm. Best bet of the night. Trevor Henry in the last leg with a lazy horse from the rail, you're gonna get your money's worth. Uh, especially that's that's, uh, that's one thing I can tell you. All systems going. We've seen we've seen this guy have the rail uh, on some bottom lines, and he really responds well when he's shown the inside and he gets uh, put in play early. And yeah, Trevor Henry just so he has so much familiarity, he's going to be tough to catch. And if he's within striking distance of um, one of those top two spots, I think it's uh, I think you can almost I don't want to jinx, but you could pencil him in as one of the, uh, if, the guys if, moving on. If you're tapped out after the tenth, shoot me a note and I'll wire you some money so you can get it get it back in the eleventh. Uh, well, as Greg mentioned, I got my own machine, so. <laughs> That could be trouble. All right, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna provide some pick four and pick five tickets uh, for you guys, but we're not gonna do it uh, right now. We're gonna have everything available on the website. Uh, you guys can catch or check those out and tell them if you'd like. We're gonna try and make them affordable to take along. Um, thanks a lot for joining us. Hopefully, we can provide some winners and uh, yeah, we're gonna enjoy quite the night. And we got a guest coming up. We do have a guest coming. One up. more guest. I almost forgot. See, I, I'm so excited about this. I forgot that we have. A Maybe guest I am the professional broadcaster. Yeah. See, I got my head got a little <laughs> too big saying that. Uh, you know, Trot Trot kind of took an upward uh, trajectory ever since you hired me. So I kind of forgot that we had to finish off this broadcast. So yeah, we do have a special guest. We don't want to. You want to tune in and watch that and um, hear his insights. So we'll, he'll be joining us momentarily. All right, we're here with our special guest uh, here for this program, and it's uh, one of the com dri competitors in this uh, Drivers Challenge, and it's a Louis Philippe uh, Wa. And Louis, you're no stranger to this competition; you've participated in the past, have had success in it. Uh, first and foremost, though, how are you feeling today? Pretty good, thanks. <laughs> we didn't interrupt anything important uh, for you to take time uh, on your busy schedule to uh, to join us here, <laughs> did you? Well, I won't. I won't make that public, but uh, <laughs> maybe I should be resting at the moment. <laughs> 
Well, if you have a bad mood tonight at the track, you can certainly blame uh, blame us too for ruining your routine. Um, just before we kind of uh, – we're going to kick things off here, and we just wanted to touch on a couple of questions uh, with you, Louis. Um, and first and foremost, obviously, this was a, a fantasy draft style, and obviously the post-position order was uh, random. Uh, for you, because it was the first time that they did a draft heading into the RDC, did you put a lot of uh, time into – what was your game plan? Did you put a lot of time into it and a lot of thought process? Well, I'll tell you the truth. Uh, I, I think that uh, when, when whatever you do, if you get the best people – at doing it, do it for yourself. Mm -hmm. It might help. So I actually uh, ask uh, Jocelyn Paquette from Passion Course, and he, end, he already handicaps uh, the London races. So I thought, uh, like, I, I don't know how much hour I can put into that to to make a, as good job as he would do. So he, he he was nice to send me a list of his top pick four in every races in order, and uh, I like I kind of went by there and I. I uh, I thought he was pretty right from my own own uh, perspective too. So I just went with what he what he sent me. So if if it goes bad, I know who to blame. And <laughs> if it goes well, that's because I'm a good driver. <laughs> yeah, but no, you know what? Yeah, we'll blame Gislaine. And Gislaine obviously does a great job of providing uh, selections uh, for various racetracks. Obviously, passion will the game. I really find that very interesting, though, Louis. I think that's really neat to kind of gravitate towards. Um, you know, picking the brains of a handicapper. Obviously, sometimes we joke as handicappers, people, we probably watch sometimes just as many, if not more races than, than drivers, right? So a guy who's watching the races on a regular basis, making selections for Western, uh, for London, he's going to yeah. know the horse colony a, a lot more than um, somebody who's not there regular, regularly like yourself. No, exactly. If it was if it was a Mohawk with the, the horse that we see every week, I would have definitely been, felt very comfortable to do it myself. But uh, with horses that I like, I don't watch uh, that many races in London, and I know that someone like him that follows the race every week would probably have a better input than I would. So, some people would say it's it might have been laziness, but I just think it's it was a smart move to do. <laughs> no, no, I think that's great. Uh, no, it's delegating authority or power, right? And hey, if you have a resource and you're wise enough to. Uh, it's not all about hands, right? It's being a uh, uh, smart too. Right. You got to be smart on the right. track. You got to be smart off the track. Yeah, but and even with in those uh, challenge, like when you look too much at the program, I think that you kind of, uh, it, I wouldn't say fool yourself, but it's so different. The different driver jumping on on horses and on different horses. So, and I'm pretty sure that's what we're gonna see tomorrow. A lot of surprise, a lot of uh, long shot or like or and races that would unfold not the way that uh, most of handicapper would have would have see it you know yeah for sure i mean we, and and we just went over the card and your name came up a couple times in a couple uh different scenarios should we should we tell him that uh shannon sugar doyle may have uh may have put the pressure on him uh yeah he did he's a big fan of uh you know you um i noticed that i, I was gonna say you but i guess Gislaine really gravitated towards uh some of the stephen boston's uh, trainees he's been having a lot of uh, success yeah. um over there at the Western Fair. Yeah, we just kind of wanted to start off and ask you about a couple of your drives and maybe give us some thoughts. You can go ahead, Dan. Well, R.J. Hooker in the seventh race, actually, the the Stephen Boson Strotter. Um, yeah. Uh, the first race we asked uh, Shannon about was was the seventh race, and and I had you picked for first, but didn't didn't tell him, and uh, he said that you were his single in that race. So do you know much about the horse? I guess you probably drove driven for yeah. Steve, Steve before. Yeah, I, I drove for Steve before, and I we uh, pretty much had success every time i didn't drive that many but we had success every time we, we teamed up together i would say and that horse uh, samuel Filio actually drove him a few times before rg uker so when i uh, i asked him as well and he, uh, he told me a little bit about how the horse was and uh, he thought he thought as well that he was it was probably the, the best pick in this race so uh, how about uh, generally uh, louis in race number four it's a horse that uh, you've guided to a few wins uh, over his career starting from post number six do you think uh Think you'll be able to get the nine-year-old a bit motivated from that to starting spot? Yeah, I, I drove uh, that horse like it, it was a while ago, but mm -hmm. from what I remember, it, it's a horse that can carry speed for a long time. Like for a long time, you'll never really get tired in those kind in those kind of competition. I think it's a it's a big plus if you cause most of those horses they'll go big trips. We know, like because there is. Uh, eight guys on uh, in the race, uh, seven on the gate, and they're all gonna try pretty hard, even if the the odds doesn't uh, doesn't say that, that way, you know. So 
I think that horse that can overcome big trip and they're gonna probably be the one that, uh, that get the best result there. So I, generally, from my experience, he's a horse with a long gait and just doesn't get really tired. Now you also have the boss man. Um, it's a pretty competitive trotting event over in race number six as well. Uh, I think he's one of the players, but unfortunately doesn't draw um, that well. A uh, horse that has raced a couple times at Mohawk. What are your thoughts there, Louis? Yeah, it's same. It's, it's another one from uh, Steve uh, Bosens, and that most of the time, like I like I said, every time I drove one for him, they were ready, and uh, I expect the same with the, the two I'll, I'll be driving there tomorrow. So. Now you've had you've had some success in this event. Last year, you won the Ontario Regional and went out to Alberta for the final. And a few years back, uh, the the year you weren't able to uh, compete in the NDC. Did, I, I should know. Did you finish first or second in the Ontario that year? I, I was second to Trevor that that year. Okay, so that, so that uh, picking up my second spot. You know, you've you you've had some success, and and uh, but. You, are you, you're telling us you, you can't really go in with a, a game plan as much as because you don't know. Is that what you were saying? You don't really know how some of these horses will respond to, to different drivers. Exactly. And, and like I said, in, in most races, you know, you have a pretty good idea of what everyone else is going to do. But in this rate, in those <laughs> races, <it's, laughs> like you know, everyone's going to is going to try something different that was was what was tried on the horses before if you didn't have good results you know so if um, like i yeah. say you just go you, you go by the feeling you try to you, you drive your horse more than the race itself i would say so it's one of those things it's almost kind of um see a lot of stuff that you normally won't see in general um in events like this is there a lot more action in years uh, prior that you've participated in this do you notice that there's just a lot more movement and a lot more action uh, because of that oh yeah that's that's what I feel like. I mean, on a half mile, it's always uh, mm -hmm. it's always this this type of racing. But it was, uh, in, in my opinion, it was a little more uh, aggressive uh, in the last in the last event we did uh, in London. Now, when they when they get chirping, Louis, because I'm sure you know Garrett Rooney and 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 Trevor Henry and Tyler Borth and Bob McClure, they've all won lots of races around London. So I'm sure there's a lot of chirping that goes on. I think. Uh, you might want to remind them. I think you might hold the track record there, though, don't you? Right. <laughs> yeah, that's something too. Uh, I mean, I'm, I don't think the track record, record is going to be broken there. <laughs> no. If, yeah, it was uh, that time with Rock and Run. I would say it was a pretty easy, uh, easy thing to do. It was just by himself. Uh, yeah. Was and, it Rock and Run, or yeah, and or Jimmy Freight? Did he? And Jimmy Freight. I think Jimmy Freight went lower, but I might be. I might be wrong, okay. but I know yeah. I know you've been around that uh, track uh, quickly a couple of times. Yeah, exactly. Now, Louis, obviously, we wanna. In order, if you win this event, you end up participating, and or if you finish top two, you end up participating in the um, national driving championship, which is going to be held in uh, at Trois Rivières, uh, Quebec. Uh, uh, Trois Rivières. Trois Rivières. Oh, Rivières. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so he's always got to educate about something. <laughs> All right, my French isn't uh, so so great, but uh, for you, what would that mean to you know to participate at uh, in Quebec for you? It'll be fun for sure, and even uh, about what we just we just spoke about uh, doing the, like drafting the horses, picking the horses. I mean, it would be easier for me to Trois Rivières. I've been following that track a little more. I, I, on the, it used to be a, a little, uh, I would say, activity, but on on the Sunday afternoon, just put uh, Trois Rivières, especially the first few the first few weeks that they start back racing. It's it's always a little exciting. To, to watch the the guy there that I know, so I I feel like if if I have to go to uh, the national, if I have the chance to go national there, I might have a little uh, uh, a little uh, upside on everybody else, kind of, or, or on most of the guy I would say that comes from uh, west or east mm -hmm. in Maritimes. So you're saying you won't need Gisland's help for that. No, not this, not, not that time. <laughs> <laughs> what now? Don't be too modest, Louis. We know you can say you're a rock star at that place. Mm -hmm. If you make the nationals, it's going to be a pro Louis Wa crowd. It's going to be it, it, it's going to be exciting. I I think you'd you'd have to be excited a little bit at the prospect of going back home uh, with a chance to win your national uh, title. Yeah, definitely, definitely would be it would be very nice, uh, and. Uh, I had bad experience though. The last two times I did the driver challenge there, it was the the Banner Cup that they made, and it was oh, just yeah. one, one. So I went against Sylvain 
I think the first year and he beat me and then went again Doug the next year and he beat me too so <laughs> oh well uh, yeah. <laughs> just kind of thinking bigger picture though Louis how uh, how cool would it be to travel um, abroad and experience uh, you know uh, the host nation of the world uh, driving championship yeah New Zealand would, New Zealand that's yeah. right would be very nice for sure it would be very tough for me because I can hardly uh, understand the, the English I'm used to, so with <laughs> their different accent, I know it's going to be really hard. But uh, no, it would be nice to to travel there. To I never I never uh, went there. I never really had the opportunity to uh, take that much time to, to travel that far. But uh, it would be nice for sure. Now I stumped Rollis here on a trivia question earlier in the show, and I'm gonna I'm gonna try once more. And this is a trick question. Oh. Louis Philippe, a hockey player. What position does he play? Goalie. You're half right. He he plays out as well. Really? Eh? And he's just as good out as he is in net. But I think his preferred <laughs> he is he is he, he'll lie to you. It's the modest thing again. He played because when we played beer league, Curtis McDonald was our goalie, mm -hmm. and Louis played out, fit right in. Really? Eh? I've never seen a guy that could actually play both positions. Versatility. Absolutely. Go Half mile track, big track. Well, that's a man can do it all. Well, there you go. So he's get the job done tonight. Get the job done tomorrow, hopefully, and maybe um, be one of the representatives. And one last thing, Louis, for you. Um, do you notice that the competition level between the guys? Obviously, you guys have a great relationship. You guys have, uh, well, for the most part, and obviously love competing on a nightly basis. Does the competition level kind of uh, ramp up a little bit um, on a night like tomorrow? Like, well, every time you're on the track, there's there's not really not many friends whatever but it's, mm. i think it's even like you said it's even worse on those uh, mm. those events where there's like only eight races you have to do good during those days for eight races there is no tomorrow so mm -hmm. i think that there's a i mean if uh, if anyone if, if someone get pissed at what someone else do <laughs> i would i would quickly remind him that it's a driver challenge and that's what's going to happen there so now, for you, it's because, again, it's a point system, right? Are you more focused sometimes on just accumulating just points, whether it be even wins or finishing second or third as well? Obviously, you, you want to get the job done, but sometimes, like, do you want to go all out for the win every time or do you want to try and kind of pad your stats and uh, be close to the action? Because I think it's interesting to hear the um, the approach that guys have heading into it. Yeah, I don't know. I, I had success uh, in the earlier uh, driver championship by just going for, for mm -hmm. just trying to win so sometimes you then you get points uh, mm -hmm. by trying too much or whatever whatever but uh, <laughs> i don't know I, I i'm pretty sure everyone that had success you've seen doug that had a lot of success in those driving challenge and i've never really seen him <laughs> drive for points he, no. he wants to win so yeah that i mean if we're going to be eight guys trying to win there. Oh, that makes for good uh, good for the handicappers and the gamblers too. Lots of action, yeah. lots of effort. Yeah, exactly. exactly. It's, a, it's very nice. Those, I remember when I was, like before I started driving, those events, you don't realize it when you're in it, but it's really interesting for the public and fans. And you look forward to it and it's a real, like it's it makes it a real interesting card to watch, you know, like it's different from the day-to-day -day races where you sometimes you get you get bored after a few races or i, I really like i really like when the like standard bread canada at that point but uh, any manager whatever does uh, those kind of event and try to, to try to make the public more interested mm -hmm. cool absolutely and for you obviously before we let you go louis you had a great year last year an o'brien award finalist for driver of the year you drove a lot of really really talented horses uh, for you, what kind of maybe horse are you looking forward to sitting behind uh, this year? Uh, and there, there's a lot. Like we just mentioned earlier, uh, some that I qualified this morning, Prohibition Legal, nice mare, Luke Blay. Yes, I think to compare from year to year, I think he has way stronger barn this year. But there are a lot of good three old coming back that they're they're not qualified yet. But I'm just thinking about private access, drawn impression. He had uh, one pacer, Calico Jack Hanover, that hasn't been seen that mu that much. He might have just like four starts. He, mm -hmm. he raced in the Metro. He had the ten old, but if he had any, uh, if he was drawing a little bit just inside, I think he he might have a, sh a shot at it. So there's there's a lot of horses. I'm I'm excited to sit behind. I'll be missing someone like a tattoo artist mm -hmm. last year. It was a real a real fun fun ride with him. But uh, you don't know. Sometimes some comes that you don't even expect them to become. And like 
you would have asked me the same question a year ago. I, I didn't thought about the tattoo artist that just came in the middle of the summer randomly and made it really, really exciting for me. Absolutely, absolutely. We really appreciate the time that you took uh, to spend with us to talk about the action leading up to tomorrow. Um, hopefully you can squeeze in a nap now before the race is this evening and uh, have yourself a great week, Louis. All right. Thank you, guys. Take have care, buddy. Before concluding our first episode of the Road to the Nationals Handicapping Show, we'd just like to thank everybody for tuning in and uh, just let you know about a few exciting things happening in the Quebec City area around the time of July 5th when our NDC takes place at Trois-Rivières. Uh, there's an agricultural expo happening in the vicinity of the racetrack, an event that draws over 100,000 fans every year. And there's a, uh, a big uh, international music festival takes place in Quebec City from July 4th to the 14th, featuring bands such as the Arkells, Blue Rodeo, Nickelback, and 50 Cent. Uh, any fans that are looking to go and attend the event would probably want to book hotels in advance, being that there's lots going on at that time of year. And one last thing, if you want to visit the Standard Break Canada website, uh, we have a, a contest going on for tomorrow's regional drivers championship at Western Fair. Uh, you have to enter before tomorrow, April 23rd at 5 p.m., which is about 40 minutes before the first race at Western Fair. We'd also, we'd also like to thank all of our guests who joined us uh, here this afternoon. We'd also like to thank the production team for putting this together. Thanks for joining me, Dan, to talk some uh, shop. Uh, we'll be back in a couple of weeks to preview the Western Regional Driving Championship over at Century Downs. And, you know, but first and foremost, we've got the Ontario Regional. The kick starts tomorrow night. It's going to be loaded with action. We heard everybody so excited for it, and uh, we can't wait for it. So, uh the role to the WDC and the NDC starts uh, starts tomorrow night.